Danny Townsend's here. Danny. Hello, mate. How are you? Nice to see you, mate. Nice Round of applause for the APL CEO, Denny Townsend. Um, so obviously we'll start our, our next session now. And um, yeah, um, I'm Adrian, we've introduced before, but this is Denny. People know who, who you are. Probably for the <laughs> wrong reasons, but yeah. <laughs> um, but we're here to talk about um, the A-Leagues and um, it's been 15 months now since Independence Day, since you took the keys. Um Talk to us about how you feel. What's where, How do you feel out of 10? Give us a rating on how everything's gone and talk to us about how you feel about what, what, what's happened so far. A rating out of 10. All right, that's a tough one. Probably about a, a three, I would say. Um, and, and I think, look, there's a lot of reasons why it's a three. But, you know, I think the, the focus for us is what, what does the future look like? You know, we can look in the rear vision mirror all we like and make excuses and talk about consequences and, and why certain things are what they are but in reality no one really cares they just want to see the game improve and see it move forward and and they want to see it move forward in a real positive way across all aspects of football not just the a-league but everywhere else so you know that's uh yeah i would say it's probably a three mate a three is obviously very low on the scale what what's disappointed you the most do you think i think not having a genuine run at it, it's been hard i think you know when we we took over our first season which we're we're what halfway through at the moment or just over um, I don't think we anticipated that we'd be in the height of the pandemic in January when we're really hitting our stra- straps normally in school holidays. So I think that that was tough because we've sort of been marked on a, you know, I give, I give it three out of ten. But even when we talk to our stakeholders, you know, I think everyone's a bit frustrated with where it's at. Um, and we were never really given a, a clean run at it. And, and I think, you know, even I said... I can't wait for this season to have it without any COVID interruption and to have to reschedule 88 fixtures um, is just really hard and it's been hard on everyone, it's been hard on fans, it's been hard on players, it's been hard on the staff, um, but it is what it is, you know, you just got to plough on and that's, that's what we're going to do. You talked about getting the keys to the car for so long, do you feel just the car has an engine at the moment, doesn't have many wheels or anything <laughs> like that? Just talk about, like, yeah, as I said, you've got something to work with, but there's a lot to be done, basically. Yeah, I think the foundations are still there. I just think we haven't had the opportunity to really realise the potential in the time we've had the keys. But, you know, I think what's really important is that we're now well capitalised. So, you know, God forbid we weren't well capitalised because I think we'd been having a much different conversation here today. So we've sort of got time. Now, I know people will, are impatient and, and I get that on the world's most impatient person. But I think spending that money we have in the height of a pandemic is not very smart. So... You know, throwing good money after bad is not what this is about. It's about a, a calculated investment over time that's going to ensure our game has a long future at a professional level and with that, how it interfaces with the other um, components of football in this country and, and drive for sort of collective success because that's what we need. We can't have one part of the football industry thriving and the rest of them on their knees. That just won't work in a market this size. 